Another feature of the UKD RAP are the interactive workstations, where the first one we will talk about are these Jupyter Lab workstations. The Jupyter Lab workstation can be found under the Tools tab here and clicking on Jupyter Lab. You can launch a Jupyter Lab workstation by clicking on the button New Jupyter Lab here. The first thing we need to do is specify the research project that we want to have access to on the remote worker or instance that you're about to launch. This selection will determine the files you'll have access to on that remote worker or instance. Next, there are several other parameters that we'll need to specify to configure the instance or remote worker. So there are two options here. We can work with a single node or a Spark cluster where the Spark cluster should be used when you need distributed clusters when working with large data sets that require a lot of memory. Next, you will select the instance type. So you'll determine the number of GPUs or CPUs, the amount of memory, as well as the amount of storage that you want your remote worker or instance to have. Then you'll set the time duration which is the amount of time you expect to run this instance. By default, the time is set to four hours, but this can be extended after you launch the workstation. And then finally, you can determine which pre-compiled environment or set of libraries and packages that you want to have available on that remote worker or instance. And so there are several different environments you can choose from. There are environments containing packages for doing machine learning analysis, image processing, and then your standard Python and R. And then we can click Start Environment. So we actually already initiated a Jupyter Lab instance since it can take a few minutes to start up. So we can click on the link that's in our monitor tab. This link will bring us to a landing page where we can open notebooks to work in both Python or R. Alternatively, you can also start a terminal to work in Bash. Inside this Jupyter Lab environment, we can access files on the platform by using the mounting that we mentioned earlier. So specifying files with the slash mount slash project prefix, or alternatively, we can directly access files on the UKB wrap by navigating to the DNA Nexus tab over here. So here is a notebook that's located on our project that we selected. And in this notebook, we're using the DX extract dataset command and then performing some manipulations using the pandas library. And so that's just a little bit about the Jupyter Lab workstation. Now this instance will automatically terminate after the time duration that you set. So in this case, after four hours, but if we're done using it earlier, you can feel free to terminate the workstation via the monitor tab by clicking terminate here. Next, similar to the Jupyter Lab instance, you can also spin up an RStudio Workbench instance by navigating to RStudio, again, under the Tools tab. You can start a new RStudio Workbench workstation by clicking on the same button here, this new RStudio button. Again, you'll select the project for which you want to access files from. And then here you'll select the instance type that you'll want to use. This will determine again the CPUs, GPUs, storage and memory that you want to have available on that remote worker or instance that's running your 
our studio workbench. And then we can click start environment. And then again, similar to before, we've already started running a Jupyter Lab instance, since this can also take a while to start up. And so on our monitor tab, we can click on the link here. So we'll then click on starting uh, a new session here. And this will bring us to what looks like our studio workbench on your local machine, where you have your uh, console or terminal uh, here on the left, and then your files at the bottom right here. And so one thing we can do is start by downloading the UKB wrap repository by calling git clone. After calling git clone, we can see that the folder for the UKB wrap now appears in the root directory of our project here. And within here, there's a folder called RStudio demo, which contains a bunch of files, which you can use to further explore the functionality of the RStudio workbench uh, workstation. And so one difference between the Jupyter Lab instance and this RStudio instance is that there is not a time duration that you set as you noticed when we started this RStudio workbench. And so when you're done, you need to remember to terminate the session. And to do that, you can just simply click the terminate button at the top right here. Another option is to uh, click terminate via the monitor tab in the same way that we did for the Jupyter Lab instance.